Chancellor, welcome to our program. It's great to be able to talk to you in Berlin. I just want to get your reaction, though, first to the European elections, the results. Your party came first here in Germany, but the Greens did very well, and you did do a little worse than usual. In general, how do you think it's gone? First of all, I was pleased that more people went to the elections than in the last European elections. That's been the case in many countries. Secondly, we have become the strongest party, and this will of course play a role when we nominate the positions within the European Union. And third, it's correct that the Greens actually have been very strong, and it has to do with issues that people are interested in the most these days. For example, climate change. and that is also for my part, of course, a challenge now. We have to give better answers to all these issues. And we have to say very clearly that targets that we have committed to are targets that we remain committed to. And yet, since you brought this up, I might as well talk about the environment, because it's what every young person practically is interested in, is their existential right. You've made targets, but you haven't kept them. Very many countries have not kept them. Germany is still quite dirty. You decided to put aside nuclear power after the Fukushima disaster. Do you regret that? Do you think there should be nuclear power or more commitment to a clean environment? Also, erst einmal bin ich uh, der Meinung, dass well. I'm of the opinion that it's correct that the young people of the world rise up and point out to the older generation what is happening to their future. And we have actually been able to keep within certain limits of the targets. But with the limits of 2020, for example, we have difficulties this year. We are now committed to 2030. I don't regret leaving nuclear energy because I feel that was the correct decision. And I'm strongly convinced that generating energy by nuclear is not sustainable in the long run. We have also decided to phase out power generated by coal plants by 2038. And it's of course a challenge to use neither coal nor nuclear energy. And we have to find a solution to this. We can do this. Here in Germany, renewable energies are already an important part of the energy mix, and we want then to generate more energy by renewables by 2030. I want to talk a little bit about your relationship with America. You are going to give the commencement speech at Harvard to the graduates for this year. You, for the last nearly 15 years, have been a fierce defender of democracy and freedom on this continent and in the Western Alliance. I want to know how important America's role has been historically in making Germany such a robust democracy. One of the most important decisions that the United States took after the Second World War was to give Germany and Europe a chance to actually develop themselves, well, economically speaking. That was achieved by the Marshall Plan. America has always defended us, also in the eastern part of Germany, under the reign of the Soviet Union and the former Germany Democratic Republic. The fact that the Iron Curtain fell that the wall fell. This we all owe mainly to the behavior of the Americans, the staunch attitude standing by us over time. And when we had this double-track debate, Europe in those days, which was a polarizing debate, but it helped us in the end to gain freedom. We are, of course, grateful to America. And in my commencement speech, this will be my main focus, these sort of biographical issues. So this won't be a classic political speech, but a speech also about my own life. And I will try to explain to students and the lessons that I draw from my own life. The students will be very aware that you have taken a very principled stance. Um, you were the only world leader who greeted President Trump's election with welcome, but based on a commitment to mutual values, freedom, democracy, human rights, tolerance, free press, etc. So they're very well aware of where you stand um, in relation to President Trump. The first question is, is it difficult to keep Germans liking America, liking this president at this time? Is it difficult to keep them on side? 
Also, es gab in the history of the United States, there were again and again solutions, where, for example, in the double track debate, big parts of the German population did not agree with the Americans. But we have this obligation to forge a good relationship, and we have the duty to grapple with those issues and debate them. Also, in order to seek solutions, sometimes this is done easily, sometimes this is more complicated. But if you say you stand for a multilateral world, and that is what I do stand for, and say only together we can resolve problems, then you have to always work together to find a common solution. And this is what we do. And this is also a characteristic of my relationship with the current President Trump. And I believe this also works in a respectful manner, even if you don't always agree. I, I want to show you a few pictures, because these are, you've seen three American presidents, four British prime ministers. Uh, I think it's two or three French presidents, and many, many leaders have come and gone. Um, you've been a bit of a punching bag for President Trump. He's, he's said some quite strong things, including, you know, your relationship with Russia and all the rest of it. I just wanted to show you this picture, because that went viral around the world. I wonder what you can tell me about your personal relationship and your political relationship, because his own White House says he's only strong with the people he considers friends. Do you consider him a friend? We have a... I think we have close cooperation, which simply results from problems we have had to resolve together. And this picture also shows that we are indeed grappling with an issue. In every communique which we had to declare, I was also the host for the G20 negotiations in Hamburg. We had contentious debates, but in the end, we also found common ground. It's certainly always a challenge to a debate, but I very happily take on this challenge. The president has his opinions, I have mine. And very often, we also find common ground. If not, we have to keep on talking and negotiating. So just quickly, the trade war, the tariffs, um, the president has said that basically German-built cars should be exempted on a national security basis. What's your reaction to German cars being considered a national security threat to the United States? Naja, ich nehme das äh, zur Kenntnis und wir bringen dann natürlich unsere Argumente vor. Ich glaube, well, I take note of this. Then of course we build our case. I think it's right and good that we have a mandate from the European Union for trade talks with the American government. Germany will hold these talks very seriously. And my argument, of course, is that German cars are not built only in Germany. That, for example, with the BMW, their biggest plant is in South Carolina. This means Germany has much more direct investments taken out by German companies in America than the reverse, American companies investing here. So I think we should look at these issues together, that namely American jobs, American places of training have to be secured as well. And then goods can be transported from there to the rest of the world. Further, I think we should underline that also from the German side we are open to all American companies. Maybe many SMEs don't know that you can trade with us as well. So I invite all American businesses to take a closer look at German markets. We are open and welcoming everyone with open arms. Um, Chancellor, you have won a remarkable four elections. It's said that President Obama suggested that you should run again in 2017 after he came to visit you after the election of President Trump. Um, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, said to me in her typical fashion, she said, as long as he's there, I'm here. Do you feel that? Did you feel that pressure? And again, I'd like to show you a picture because you tended to have a pretty friendly relationship eventually with President Obama. Do you miss him? America has very clear rules. There, after eight years at the very latest, the presidency comes to an end. I was aware of this, of course, on the very first day of Barack Obama's presidency. Our relationship did not start very smoothly. I had been criticized a lot when he wanted to speak in Berlin in front of the Brandenburger Gate, but I said he's not the president yet, and only presidents can speak there. It was not that easy in the beginning. I never revealed what was discussed in private talks, and therefore I will also not reveal anything from my talks with the previous American president. But I say it's the obligation of every chancellor to build good relations with any American president and to seek solutions. This is Germany's interest. This is America's interest. And so you have to make an effort to find solutions. 
<laughs> from President George W. Bush, who basically said very nice things about you. You've got a great spirit, he said, you have your love freedom, you're a great woman. Do you remember this? Yes, of course I remember this. I thought it was a kind gesture at the time, a friendship. The fact that it caused such excitement and it went viral, to be honest, I could not imagine that at all at the time. It was a friendly gesture.